uh, in an effort to become the world's biggest buzzkill, I have uh, taken up arms against the idea of entertainment or recreation, both of them. Huh? People need to be entertained. They need the distraction. I wish to God that somebody would do something to block out the voices in my head for five minutes. The voices that scream over and over. Why do they come to me to die? Why do they come to me to die? You wanna buy some acid? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Fuck, man, we got checks! Fucking doggy style and shit on their parents' I'm looking my chest, I'm looking my triceps, I'm looking the back of my calves, and I'm looking my heart, and I'm looking my lungs. I'm looking my buttocks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, BK, why don't you just take your mama home some chicken, and then I won't have to stuff my boot all up in your ass. Man, you are one crazy motherfucker. But it's all too to your mother. Doesn't she ever want you? Tell her this isn't some communist daycare center. Tell your mother I hate her. Tell your mother I hate you. Hello, fellow rubes. Welcome back to Eat Shit and Die, Ricky. Well, Brett Weinstein might feel that way if he sees this. Uh, Brett Weinstein is one of those uh, college, university professor, teacher, educator guys, and. I hold them in very high esteem as they shape the future of uh, our country through the educating of our young people. Actually, I'm kidding. Uh, they're just... Ooh, licking piss, drinking figure, friggin' tit, tweaking love, biting ass, licking shit, stabbing motherfucking spunk, loving ball, busting cock, sucking fist, fucking lips, magnet thirst, quenching cool, living, ever giving, useless man. I know, Brett Weinstein, he's one of the good guys. He stands up against wokeism and the Marxism that is going on on the college campus. Actually, I would go so far as to say it's the fault of guys like Brett Weinstein and Jordan Peterson. You guys are in the college environment, right? You're, you're working in the universities. Why the, the process of them taking over the education system to the extent that they have took them at least 20 years. Well, where the fuck were you? You weren't saying anything when this was happening, when this was starting to happen? There's not enough profit margin in it for you? Nobody was giving you enough attention to, to say anything about it? Or just that your arrogant ass knew that the more of these dumb Che Guevara t-shirt wearing fucking teachers were occupying the faculty halls, you got to be the smartest man on campus. So sorry if I'm short on hero badges to pass out to these people. You're an evolutionary biologist. What practical use does that have in the world? That's the other thing I hate about intellectuals. You know astrophysics. I'm an astrophysicist. You know that has no practical use whatsoever down here in the real world. We use that shit for absolutely nothing. And by the way, one quick lesson in school, we all kind of understand it. You just take the time to know all the vocab words and equations that make you sound more knowledgeable about shit we can't use. Evolution, that's still kind of, I actually believe in evolution, but most people consider that to be still kind of up in the air. The only people that can make practical use of evolutionary biology is the government when they make viruses and chemical weapons and shit like that. And also mankind is never gonna go that far into outer space. There's been several civilizations prior to this one that go way back millions and millions of years that have tried. Once we've reached the point where we go, I think we can leave the planet now, the planet kills the fuck out of us. Because we're not supposed to leave. The conditions that make this planet habitable to us are unique only to this planet. Hey, this one's got some conditions over here that says it can house life. Can it? No. Not shit living on it. The rest of the planets have an immune system to keep us the fuck off of them. They're either too hot, they're too cold, they have perpetual storms that rain sheets of glass sideways, their rivers are made out of methane. We're not supposed to go there. You got a perfectly good planet here, and you're over here going, I want to go to that one. Well, there's nothing up there. Barren wasteland that's way too hot. Yeah, but I'm not there, so I won't be there. 
It's progress to go there. Maybe shit living on the planet in general is a sign of poor planetary health. I mean, look, if you got a bunch of apples and one of them is all slimy and shit is living on it, you'd throw it away. Anything down here that is slimy with shit living on it, we throw it away because it's garbage. What is the earth? It's a slimy thing with shit living on it. And if those are the conditions in which a planet actually dies, then we're doing our job by killing it. Intelligent life is just planet AIDS. Like, if planets went to doctors, what do you think the doctor would look for to determine whether or not he was in good shape? Just judging by all the other planets. I'm sorry, Mr. Earth, but you've taken on a lot of water. You don't have an extreme temperature on either side. You're, you're not hot enough. You're not cold enough. It looks like we're uh, going to have to diagnose you with the big C. Oh, God. I got, I got a civilization? How bad is it, Doc? Don't lie to me. It's like a stage three industrialization. Oh, fuck. If there's one thing true in the law of nature, one thing's miracle is another thing's tragedy. Thing A goes, yay, we have food. And thing B goes, fuck, I'm dead. All right, but, so I finally clicked on a Brett Weinstein video about why he opposes entertainment and recreation. So let's hear this out. This ought to be brilliant. Uh, in an effort to become the world's biggest buzzkill, I have uh, taken up arms against the idea of entertainment or recreation, both of them. Huh? Um, Full stop? Kind of. Didn't it, tell. It's a, it's, a lot, um, it's a lot like my position about pornography versus erotica. Interesting. What are you worried it's doing to your mind? Uh, wasting it. Well, don't waste your mind. We need to wake up. We need to evolve. We need to find truth. They're unable to see truth because their minds are wasted. You know what the truth is? You know what your life is? You're meant to live long enough to reproduce and then die horribly so you can feed a pack of wolves, a flock of vultures, and a colony of ants. There, there's your fucking truth. It's cold, it's ugly, it doesn't like you. Dude, that's so negative, man. So negative vibes, you're low vibration, that's low frequency. That's low frequency thought, bro. And while I'm telling everybody the truth, we don't live in the matrix. We're not in a computer simulation. Bro, how do you know? I just do, okay? I watch the Wachowski chicken lay the matrix egg. That's, that's how I know it's bullshit. Really? Yeah. But look, here's my point. If... If hallucinogens aren't your thing, if it's not something you should be doing, don't do them. If it is something you should be doing, don't do them recreationally. Now, what I'm saying is not don't enjoy yourself. I hope you have, I hope you laugh the whole time because of all of the insights that you take away from it. And then I hope you reflect on what those insights were and how they looked from that state and how they look from back down here on earth. We're in the spirit world, asshole. I can't see us. <laughs> Doing mushrooms is fun and shit, but if you really want to know why they make you trip, it ain't because the Earth wants to connect with you spiritually. It's a defense mechanism. Some plants are this thing called poisonous, and they don't want to be eaten, but it happens, so they get revenge after the fact. Some make you bleed out of the ass and die, and others send you on this goofy, Magic adventure. So when you hear this noise, you start dancing because you think you're in a fucking discotheque or something, and you get wasted. Bro, I see the universe in your spots. And I see the truth, man. We're one. squander it on something foolish doesn't make any sense make use of it and i believe this about i believe this about sex frankly this is a power tool it's very important power tool what you mean like a table saw you know how much i've had enough of the word power too you know how much better relationships would be if one of the other partners wasn't constantly seeking power 
and trying to be the dominant. Point is, look, there are all of these things that create this tremendous reward. And that reward is built into them for a reason, an evolutionary reason. To use them just to trigger the reward without accomplishing whatever it is that's supposed to make you feel good is like, well, I mean, there are a lot of drugs. This is how psychopaths talk. They have a philosophy about every mundane thing. You're missing the best part, Mr. Mason. When you're eating the flesh from the pig, look into his little beady eyes. That way, you will be devouring his soul. He cherish the moment for what it is. Observe your food. Smell it. Touch it. Put your mind into it. And then when you're finally ready, consume it slowly. Can't just eat the pork chops. You gotta look at the pig's face while you do it. And there's gotta be some kind of weird philosophical reason for it. Well, I mean, there are a lot of drugs that I don't think are interesting. Drugs that can trigger a sense of uh, overwhelming excitement without having done anything. Mm. Well, you are supposed to experience overwhelming excitement in life when you've accomplished something great. If you can chemically trigger it, what have you just done to your motivational structure? Right? So what I'm saying is not don't enjoy these things, but enjoy them at their full depth. Right? It's not entertainment. It's not recreation. Right? Read a great story, not because it entertains you, it passes the time, but because it enriches you, because it makes you into something you weren't before you started the story. It's that good. Mm -hmm. It alters your values or your understanding of yourself or the universe or something. So his point is, don't stop doing the things you enjoy, but don't do them because they entertain you or because it's just good recreation. Do it so you could be a pretentious asshole about whatever that thing is, whether it's doing drugs or reading a book. And if you don't use those experiences to talk down to other people, like you're Moses coming down from the mountain, then it, you wasted your mind. He just talked in circles and came to no conclusion whatsoever. But uh, I talked uh, slow and I used very, very... Uh, extraordinarily large words when I was talking in eccentric, circular uh, pattern of thought and logic, and I didn't curse and make blowjob jokes, so whatever uh, I, I said uh, must have more merit than your garden variety rude who does not have a a large vocabulary full of synonyms for very simple words. Let's talk about the issue of blinding. And I'll just tell you my own thought process. I, I come from a background studying complex systems. I'm a biologist, I'm an evolutionary biologist, and I'm very interested in levels of analysis. So I, I, I come to questions of uh, how human societies function through that lens. And a hypothesis in such a case tends to be actually a nested series of sub-hypotheses. And you build them out, and the more that they stand up to new observations, the more truth they are likely to contain. So I build up a model, and if I see something next week that's inconsistent with it, my point is, well, my confidence in that model is pretty low. But if I have a model and it goes a year or two years, and all I see are things that actually fit with it, I tend to get the sense maybe it's, it's, it's right or it's analogous to something that's right. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? In his line of work, he's trained to look for patterns. He's thinking about society the other day, and he noticed a pattern. Wow, look at that. Bam, snap of a finger. I got that entire thought that he blathered around. He has to use words like hypothesis and systems. And, and what I do is I, I make a model of my thoughts. And, and then, what do you build them out of fucking Legos? Let me explain a thought process because I know you non-university morons don't know how to do that. So while these guys just babble in circles using a lot of really big words, 
you just end up thinking whatever uh, they were saying just oh boy I must be dumb because what he's saying just went right over my head I got lost in all those big words no you didn't he didn't say anything you know it used to be the most ridiculous thing in Gilligan's Island was that they had a professor like some scientist that can do everything in the world but fix a hole. he can make a radio out of coconuts but he can't fix a fucking hole in the boat well, you know what? Now that's the most realistic part of Gilligan's Island. Because if you were stuck on an island with a university Harvard PhD professor, he would do everything in the world but fix the hole in the fucking boat. Competitive struggles all the time inherently. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, it's the engine that makes Western civilization work. It just needs to be placed in, I used to think of it as like the explosive energy in an internal combustion engine cylinder, right? An explosion isn't a productive thing, but in that context, it can be very, very productive. But when you are in a competitive system, there is a, an advantage that accrues to anybody who has superior information. And what I, I mean, it, this almost feels too obvious to me at this point for it not to be on everybody's mind, but we proceed by imagining that there is a level of patriotism that we share with other people in our system, that surely they have God the same damn face, sense of buzzard. America or the West being this marvelous structure in which to accomplish new things, to innovate, and they must therefore want to protect it as well. And we have a harder time grappling with, well, what if they don't see it in those terms? And what if actually there's a group of folks who's very powerful, who views democracy as a frightening mechanism that can upend whatever it is you're attempting to accomplish based on the whim of a public that may not know what it's doing. I mean, I actually, I understand that concern. Democracy can do things that are destructive. And so if you had a position of power, you might view the fact that the public can throw out leadership and install somebody who's saying things that resonate with them with a certain amount of trepidation. So if you didn't have the sense that the West and its, its uh, obligation to the consent of the governed was a positive thing, you might start playing against people that we would tend to think they would be playing uh, alongside. Well, the system runs on competition, and that's a healthy thing until too many people are born with advantages uh, and some sort of advanced knowledge and important friends that can do things for them, like cut off all other avenues of success for people that weren't born with set advantages. That's what he just said in a nutshell. It took him a hundred years to get there. He's using a lot of big words and shit, but essentially he's making the argument of every militant cracker that is up in the hills of Kentucky making bombs out of fertilizer. But he's got a drone on for like two minutes just to remind everybody, hey, I'm the smartest guy in the room. Like, I don't know what it is with, like, the academic class. They have this insecurity that they can't just, they can't stand it when regular people know what they know without having their credentials. I have had some experience with sharks. Well, have you? Yeah, and I think a, I think a great white might have done this. Cocaridon cocarius? Yes, you cunt. A fucking shark. You're only here because I need somebody with the word ologist in their name to tell the mayor to close the goddamn beach because we have a shark problem. Because for some reason my going out into the ocean five years ago and fist fighting one of these things really doesn't seem to impress him. Now finish the autopsy on this fucking fish so I can relate that information to him and he'll actually believe it. This is a mammal. Who gives a shit? They would be a building up a whole range of topics in which their superior information allowed them to get ahead at the expense of others. I mean, this is, if we think about a financial market, economists talk about the greater fool. How do you make money? You find somebody who understands less than you do, and you trade things, and 
basically you take advantage of what they don't understand and their wealth is transferred to you in so doing and that actually can be a positive force if what you understand is something about the future that is not clear to others if you're really insightful then you can get wealthy by seeing the future with greater clarity but you can also do the same trick by blinding your competitors by making it so that the information that they would use to figure out what's coming is not available to them and what would that look like well this is where the rubber meets the road with this idea it would look like an attack on all of the things that allow us to navigate all of the sources of public truth-seeking. It would look like an attack on all newspapers. It would look like an attack on universities and science. It would look like an attack on journals. It would ultimately look like an attack on the courts. And that just simply matches the evidence that we have. All of these public truth-seeking mechanisms are becoming dumber by the hour. All right, let's look at how long he stretched that out this entire speech to express what amounts to a three or four sentence idea inherently productive context accrues superior perceived democracy existing within a structure therefore mechanism destructive positions of power trepidation marvelous innovate resonate obligation to the consent of the governed Explosive energy in an internal combustion cylinder. It also happens to be my favorite Fear Factory song. Positive force, insightful, seeing the future with creative uh, clarity. Truth seeking. And his description of capitalism is you take a thing, uh, n superior knowledge, and exploit people that don't have that knowledge. That's not what capitalism is. That's what the college tuition scam is. We trick you into thinking we have this superior knowledge that's going to open your mind and teach you a trade and make you important. And really, they just fill your head with communist bullshit while you take pointless classes like the history of the Beatles. Not even the bug, the fucking band. You go take a class in angry white men. Sent my kid off to be a doctor and he got a PhD in protesting and doesn't even know his own gender. Daddy? confused I've got a hard on and what that is doing is it is putting people in people who, who see this problem are correctly recognizing that they are much better off to unplug from those institutions and attempt to figure out what's going on outside of them but what many of them do not realize is what a poor substitute for public truth seeking that actually is you know, I mean, it might be good for people like you and me. It brings an audience that wants to hear a conversation that hasn't been sanctioned by one of these lobotomized institutions. But from the point of view of the average person trying to figure out what to make of the advice that their doctor is giving them or the FDA is telling them about nutrition, uh, it's a poor substitute. And it is the reason that I fear collapse, is that I don't, you know, you can... Put on a blindfold and you can keep driving down the road for a time, but at some point there's going to be a curve, and we can't we can't drive like this. We we have to rescue ourselves from whatever it is, whatever force, whether I'm right about its nature or not, that is keeping us from establishing the basic facts of our lives. Well, great. We recognize the problem. We're actually aware of it. We're like this close to having Illuminati Awareness Month. All the football players will dress in messianic symbols and we'll all know that we're being fucked by Big Brother. We'll be aware of it. We're not going to do anything about it, but we'll be aware of it. Much like pink pizza boxes does for tit cancer, we just know and there ain't shit we can do about it. Nobody's going to do anything. That is really the core of the problem. You listen to some guy on a podcast go, it's Hollywood, man. They're evil. It's the deep state, man. They're controlling us. We're sheep. Man, we gotta fight. Pedophiles are after our kids in schools. They're reading them porn. We gotta do something. Fuck, what do we do? Just love, man. You know, just spread love and happiness. Don't be on the low frequency vibration. 
Oh yeah, because that's really going to stop the FEMA camps, you hippie fuck. They're going to come rolling into town and go, oh shit, wait a minute. These people got too much love. I mean, we thought we were prepared. We had bullets, we had bombs, we have tanks, we have mustard gas. They got love. The one thing we didn't bother to bring. Enough of this idiocy. I will be back. So until I return, while Brett Weinstein and the rest of the world says... Eat shit and die, Ricky! I say... Eat shit and live. Now all of you, get the fuck out now before I get too mad to turn back. All y'all, now get the fuck out. Come on, you motherfuckers. Get the fuck out. Randy, you cunning son of a bitch. Don't fucking practice, Randy. Come on, Morris, you fucking genius. Get the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. God damn it. Is either by rescuing the Republic or figuring out how to walk away from a, a crash landing, it's going to be because we understand what the implications are.